So we use a lot of tools in a leather shop, but it's not every day we get to have the tool maker in the shop bringing the tool that we're going to use. So this is my friend Will Stelter. He's a really talented knife maker here in Montana. We've been friends for a while, and this is his first time visiting my shop here. And he's made a really cool, big, bad knife. So we're going to build a sheath for that together using this knife that he has made for me. So safety is important. Yes. You don't want to get hurt when you're running around in the woods with this. You want to be uh, alive and able to enjoy it in the woods. Mm -hmm. So And it's got to look good also. It's got to look good. I want the kind of classic, sitting right here, big western bowie knife sheath. The one thing that I want to stay away from, because I had this be an issue in the past, is a lot of times people will have a strap that comes over the top here. But if you do it in the front, it's really easy when you're re-sheathing your knife, you just slice up the strap. And so if you do that a couple times, pretty soon you don't have a strap anymore. Okay. <laughs> the one that comes over the back there uh, is probably going to be the most practical place for it because it still keeps it uh, nice and tight and it definitely won't come out. Man, this is just a big knife all the way around. <laughs> it's massive. And so maybe having it sit inch and or so below, inch and a half below. So we'll shoot for about two inches two and of half. handle. Two and a half. Two and a half. Something above like the top of the belt line. Cool. So we have a pattern pretty well figured out. This is going to fold over and... Uh, Let's see, sit about like that. So we've got a couple inches above for you to grab onto. Mm -hmm. It's not totally finalized, but we're just going to make one of these. So I think we can kind of wing it from here. So we'll actually put it on the leather. This is some seven to eight ounce Herman Oak veg tan leather. So this is like what you'd use if you were to make a saddle. Same stuff. It awesome. will take some dye, it takes stamping. So we'll end up finding, we'll, we'll pick some dye colors that are going to go nicely with your handle and uh, do the stamping and um, yeah, treat it like a saddle a little bit. Wonderful. Bleeding everywhere. <laughs> this knife cuts. Now, Tanner, this is the technique that we call skiving. Uh, <laughs> Pretty, pretty basic leather working technique. You'll get it done at some point, I'm sure. And so we've done up, and when I say we, I use that term loosely. One of us did up a nice stack up here uh, <laughs> so that the, the guard sits spaced off from where the belt loop is gonna hang. You've done some really neat, ornate stuff here, and the, the wood itself is beautiful. What are you thinking in terms of the look of this? It's gonna be kind of utilitarian, but is there anything you wanna do to dress it up with like an inlay or tooling or things like that? Some like glittery, maybe snake skin, some <laughs> silver snake skin. I might maybe. have some pink, I think. Perfect. <laughs> okay. I'm supposed to hit it with a hammer. I'm not hitting it hard enough, am I? Tanner, I hear those uh, liquids are to die for. Just trying to make sure to get this, the length of this strap right here, approximately. Gives a nice burnish. So 
we're taking a little break here. Got some visitors in the shop. What are we working on, guys? A ribbit. A ribbit? <laughs> because. Well, it's a good little interruption. Always awesome to have those guys here. So we're gonna finish this sheath now. So we got everything dyed, cut out, starting the assembly. I don't know if my sewing machine is gonna get through all of this leather. It's like over three quarters of an inch thick, so it's gonna be really pushing it. So we're gonna give it a shot. Down. Dusty. <laughs> I don't think that it's allowed to fall any way other than glue side down. Oh. Turn when I was, uh... We haven't sewn it yet, and, and that's because I'm scared to death to try. This is seven layers of eight ounce leather. Seven eighths. Seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so this is exceeding the limit of the machine. Ah. So, should we have designed it differently? Maybe. <laughs> that would have avoided this. We're going to give it a try. Uh, I don't want to go sew right now because I think something's going to break. Let's try it. Scared to death. We're going to give it a try. We should. Um, maybe give Will some space in case something explodes here, but... <laughs> okay, we can do this. Alright. Here it goes. It's not going at a good angle, is it, Will? But this might allow the rest of the sheath to sit flatter. We'll try it. piece of cake. Let's just make it through. One, one stitch. He's fighting. Oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> Didn't go all the way through. I think our angle of dangle here is a little off, Will. Uh-oh. Is it fixable? Um, define fixable. Can you fix it? <laughs> Can we stitch by hand? Hey, Tanner. Yes? What do leather workers season their food with? What, Will? Allspice. <laughs> okay, we'll set this snap here. How'd we do? I think that's one that we're going to remove and do again. What's happening? Things are kind of unraveling here at the end. This looks ugly, and I'm going to do it again. Oh. So the knife that you made, that I used in several spots on this project, mm -hmm. um, you made this, and it's awesome. Tell us more about what it is. It's actually a bell knife. He doesn't like that name for it. This is the most 
resounding, re resonant knife I've ever made. Uh, it's a half round knife. You can probably guess why they call it that, hopefully. Uh, but I did a nice full flat grind on it. Uh, and so despite the fact that it's a little thicker right here where the top of the handle is, it comes down to a really thin edge. It's 100 layers of Crew Forge V and 15N20 Damascus. And the scales are Arizona Ironwood uh, Burl with nickel silver domed pins. Well, I've declared it's the nicest one ever made. So the really cool thing is, one other cool thing, is that um, Will made a video where he shows exactly how he made this step by step. But he's also made a bunch of other videos lately. Kind of his thing is tools of the trade, right? So making mm -hmm. tools and then bringing the tools to the people that make them. And and so that's pretty awesome. Check those out. He made a straight razor and got shaved with it. Exactly. Not cut, not cut with it, right? Nope. Will, didn't quite get it wrapped up today. No. Nope. Unfortunately. Um, so Will's got to head back home. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stitch this by hand. Mm -hmm. I goofed up setting this snap. I'm gonna take that out and set it nicer so it doesn't look so bad. So, finish it up, mail it to you. Awesome. Appreciate you being here. Well, thank you. Of course. So, unfortunately, that didn't work out too well with the sewing machine. I think we probably could have stuck it together, but it may not have looked too pretty. So. I'd feel better just punching all these holes by hand. Um, I use this, the stitching iron here, and this is one that's designed to actually poke through, not just mark the, the holes on the surface. So I've poked through almost all the way, or at least as far as it can go through, um, where it's thicker, it, it's not gonna reach all the way through. So I'll use this stitching awl and go all the way through and then just saddle stitch it by hand. Well, that was a huge relief to stitch this. Although I had to do it by hand, I think it turned out looking really nice. All that's left to do now is to finish the edges. And I'll show you kind of an old school method I learned. This is uh, what saddle makers sometimes do. Um, also a sheath maker named Paul Long uses this method. And so we use saddle soap and water and some uh, thievings dye on the edges. Sanded this edge against again one more time just to get it nice and smooth. Try to knock down those high spots after dyeing. And uh, now I use a little bit of that saddle soap and water again on this edge. And burnish again. And after this, I'll use some beeswax and canvas to just put a final final little finish on there. And after that, we'll apply the sealant so that this dye never never seeps out onto a person's clothing. All right, so we're just about there. The last thing I wanna do is to apply a finish to this sheet. And I like to use acrylic resoline. Um, so this doesn't actually waterproof it necessarily, but it seals the dye in, so the dye is not gonna rub all over a person's pants. I like to dilute this 50-50 with water, and that just helps it to be a little less tacky, uh, a little less kind of sticky feeling as it goes on. Well, what a fun project. That was really cool to have Will here where we could make this sheath together. Check out Will's channel. I think you really enjoy what he's got going on over there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video.